uh, to uh, talk about the history of the bar part one. Uh, I'm Gedian, also known as Knurft, and I am Maurizio, also known online as M for you, which is Mao short. So, what is our bar? Uh, our bar was an initiative uh, that we got to on the 19th of December in 2020. Uh, it was related to COVID. Everybody was sitting at home on their own, uh, having no one to talk to, and we were chatting on Telegram and thinking that it was ridiculous that we had this jetty, beefy Jitsi server uh, and that we didn't use that for that. So initially we opened meet.opensource.org slash beer. But when we were in there, we decided that it was a bit stupid to call it beer because there are other beverages like coffee, water. Uh, I'm pretty sure I was drinking whiskey, so call it, calling it beer wasn't exactly <laughs> sticking to it. <laughs> so what is it? Um, the bar is an, an open Jitsi session. Anybody can start it at any time of the day, ask others to hop in and have a chat, uh, ask for support, uh, learn things, etc. Yeah, one of, one of the things that were uh, really amazing about the, this thing is that it started as a joke, you know. It was uh, the two of us and then a few others started to join and, you know, we, were, we just, uh, during the lockdowns, there were no bars we could go to. So we're like, well, why don't we make our own the bar since we have booze and uh, why not? Rather than drinking by ourselves, why don't we bring that's the social aspect of the bar into, into our home uh, through the computer? And uh, it started as a joke, but then it, it grew to the point where there were people just hanging out all the time. Like there, uh, there were people in there like almost, I want to say 24 hours. They would there were people literally going to sleep, but leaving the camera on. There were also people falling asleep in front of the camera. Uh, <laughs> Who did? Well, Who we're did not naming this? anyone. We're not naming anyone and shaming here. Well, uh, I, yeah. uh, to continue, it uh, got out of hand pretty quickly because <laughs> the release of 15.3 came and we decided to uh, have a 24-hour release party in the bar so that it would be accessible for, accessible for people from all over the world. Um, what did those idiots do? They decided that 100 hours would also be doable. And in the end, that led to a GC session of over 500 hours. Well, yeah, and uh, the only reason it was 500 hours is because the server decided that enough was enough and just <laughs> essentially crashed. So uh, the, ca the, the countdown restarted and uh, I think we, it went on for another hundreds of, I don't remember, 200 hours again. So when we saw that, it, it was pretty <laughs> motivating to, uh, to continue it. And on top of that, the, the even more amazing part is that this, we started having people coming in asking questions about Linux, about OpenSUSE, or uh, how do I do this, how do I fix that problem? Or even we had people, uh, how do I package RPM? And, uh, and there were like uh, a few people in the bar who knew how to do it, and they taught that person how to package. And now, well, I mean, you're in the audience. I mean, <laughs> I think, uh, how many packages have you done so far since then? Yeah, lots. Okay, <laughs> so that's that's the great part. So it it, it encouraged uh, uh, people to contribute to to the project. Uh, something that started a little bit in a, in a very light-hearted way, and you know, like I said, almost like a joke. It ended up driving people to the community to to contribute uh, to OpenSUSE, and it's still and it's still going. And from there, if I'm not mistaken, we had other initiatives that started. Uh, like uh, other public like meetings. The, like the community meetings. The, the, the community meetings, um, right? Basically, it became a thing to use that Jitsi server to get people together. It's, a, it's a, uh, an establishment of a, of a culture, a subculture, whatever you want to call it. 
but I also want to emphasize that how, how important it was for people to stay in touch with each other uh, up to the point that uh, New Year's Eve came up and we were still in lockdown. Uh, what do you do? Uh, Bill, uh, one of our American uh, friends who is not here, said, you know what, we'll invite Neil over at my house and a couple of others. We'll put up a laptop, connect to the bar and celebrate New Year's Eve uh, 24 hours so that the, the rest of the world can join and uh, wish each other a happy new year. Uh, I can say that was one of the best New Year's Eves I ever had. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And on top of that, I mean, um, we had also someone who was quite thankful about the fact that the, this initiative existed because he literally said uh, privately, uh, without the bar, I would have lost my mind. Like, they were so uh, suffering from cabin, cabin fever, like stuck at home all the time, they couldn't get out, and the fact that there was this social thing going on, that they were able to hang out. I mean, we call it the bar, but you don't have to drink if you don't want, just, uh, just to be clear. So the, just the fact that there was this social aspect going on, it, uh, they were really thankful that they, in terms of mental health, that uh, it existed, because they it managed to, uh, to get through this, uh, the, the difficult times during COVID. So that there was also that, and it was, I was very happy to hear that. I mean, that's, a, that's one yeah. thing that I don't want to leave unmentioned, uh, and that is the returning uh, remarks, especially by younger people, that the bar changes usernames, user handles, etc., into real people with a voice, a, va a face, uh, etc. And there is the effect that if there are six people in the bar, the chances that some of them might help, uh, be able to help you are already pretty big. Yeah. And otherwise, they will know who can help you. Yeah, that's, that's true. Um, I think maybe we should, we should probably, we talk about the bar, but I, we should yeah. probably... Yeah, put that slide up, dude. You keep talking, I'll do that. I keep talking about what? Bar stuff? <laughs> then you're the moderator. <laughs> then you start the session and anybody in the hall can join with their laptops. And we'll have a bar session here. Jersey server is down. <laughs> Lubos is there, so we have a moderator. Hi all. We can't hear you, but you can hear us, I think. <laughs> so this is it. Uh, I, I think that by now, uh, I was counting at home, but we have a group of about 40, 50 regulars who hop in at least once a week. Hi. Hey, Luna. So uh, I hope this gives you a bit of an impression. Uh, we decided to come on completely unprepared, apart from Mar who fixed that slide five minutes before this, <laughs> because you don't go prepared to a bar. You, you just go in and see what happens, and if you don't like the atmosphere, you hop out again. You forget your microphone. Sorry? Sorry? Do you want the mic? 
Uh, yeah, well, I, I can tell you, Lubos, that uh, we have lots of people from Fedora hopping in, people exactly. from Destination Linux Network. Exactly. We are no, open. I don't get paid to mention that. Yeah. No, we are really open to everyone, right? Uh, and yeah. it doesn't matter the distribution, even if you feel like you want to talk to us, especially, you know, we have mixed contributors from Fedora, from other distri uh, distributions. No, but it's not about flames. It's about, like, having a good time, you know, and that's, that's what's important, right? Yes, actually, uh, yeah, that's uh, something very important to to say. Like, not everybody in the open source bar is an open source user. <laughs> a lot of them are. Uh, well, there are a few a few people from Fedora that we know, Arch, I think, and uh, yeah, everyone is welcome, as as, as Luber said. So that's also creates some bridges across uh, different communities and different projects. And in the bar, you don't get cut off stage. So. Join. <laughs> Thank you, Doug. <laughs> well, that was about All right, it. That was, that's about it. <laughs> well, I hope to see you guys in the bar at some point. We're very frequently in there, both Gertian and I, and then some of the people here that I know, Lubush, Emily, Doug. And there's one thing I uh, uh, want to say. I want to th give a big hand to this man here. Because every time we ping, yep. every time we ping him and came up with new stupid ideas. Uh, sorry, that's the way we talk in the bar. Uh, he, he joined in, and the same goes for Lubosch. Uh, hence, we have the community meetings now. Um, we have our code of conduct, which all. Uh, we are the only distribution that has a code of conduct that has its origins in a bar. And that's the final mode. It, start, it, it started in the bar and then eventually went to the community meeting, so that was... <laughs> saying that it was developed in the bar is not entirely accurate. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>